home theater room, customized home theater room, come check it out. Even if you didn't check it out, they do things to show it off. Oh, check out this uh, new computer. And then you see the uh, wallpaper is a picture of their new house. They do something to make sure that you saw it, even if you were trying to avoid seeing it, <laughs> you know? And yeah, I was trying to avoid seeing it because I'm like, okay, man, I, I get it. You got money. You're doing well. But you're showing off. What, what, what reaction are you trying to get out of me? Are you trying to get one of jealousy or what? what I mean, what are you trying to do? I mean, while you're doing what you're doing, and you keep asking us questions on how your business should be run. It's like you're picking our brain and fucking with our minds, but you're not doing nothing to help us. Even your blood relative, when they uh, needed money, oh, you give them a few dollars, but God damn it, you wouldn't give them something, you know, that old adage, give a man a fish, he'll eat for one day. Teaching the fish, he'll eat the rest of his life. You just wanted to give them the fish. And I'm not talking about me, by the way. You just wanted to give them the fish, but you wouldn't teach them how to fish, or at least get them the goddamn fishing pole. And a boat to go fish. I mean, when you could do it, it wasn't gonna cost them anything, but see, that's how black people operate. So what I'm trying to do, because of these life experiences, and observing black people when they get in high levels, whether they're entertainers, athletes, or whatever. Some, you know, they probably give things away. But given the charity, I dismiss because that's all a rich man's game set up for each other. But what they, I'm trying to do is set up an apparatus so that black people, we have a network for success. And the critical part is we make sure that your success gets spread around to the group. And I know the Uncle Tom, the Coons, the agents are listening. They're like, oh, yeah, maybe I need to work on that. You work on that. But you don't know the details, and I'm not giving you the details. Only people who need to know will ever get the details. And like I said, you can't get me to talk for nothing. You can't trick me to talk. Because <laughs> I'm going I'm to I'm keep on testing you. That's what, that's what this whole thing is about. We got to keep testing you to make sure you're for real. That's why I make the kind of videos I make. So we can see who's real and who is not. This is why I point these things out. Because black people keep bullshitting black people. Black people like using other black people. And usually they're working for the white man or they're working for an entity set up by the white man or controlled by the white man. Like an NAACP or something like that. Black Lives Matter. Freemasonry. Anything you could think of like that. Because fear makes you say, I can't do this. Fear makes you say, I better look at the white man. Because some people say, look at Black Wall Street. They got their shit together. Then that white man came and destroyed it. That's why we can't get educated. And that's why we can't go do our own thing. Because the white man is going to destroy it. It's true. The white man has a history of destroying what we put together. And when we're doing it strong, we could have been liberated a hundred years ago, but the white man had to destroy it. But with that being said, what you don't do is you don't say, well, because he destroyed this, I must give up. I must uh, go cower away like a bitch. <laughs> oh, man, that's not what you do. You keep fighting, you persevere. What if those people, what if they gave up? And somebody's getting in the car next to me. Even though the window's down, you know, people still nosy. So 
to them, listen to what they could listen to. <clears throat> but what if those people gave up? You know, we so you have to prepare yourself for the fact that people might want to destroy what you build. You have to prepare yourself for that. That's why you have to have backup plans. That's why with me, I want to put together an apparatus with checks and balances and enforcement. So if some Negro signs on like a Tariq Nashi, which he probably would never sign on to anything, we expect him to honor his deal. That's what I'm talking about. And, and, and you, your imagination can run wild with all the thoughts and theories, but trust me, it's not what you're going to be thinking. I can tell you that. But um, that's why we have to get it together. We have to have a, a, a brotherhood, a bond. That's what these other groups have. And you can't get a brotherhood and a bond from the white man's Freemasonry because that's the white man's brotherhood and bond. And the rest of you are peons that he gives you crumbs for doing his bidding. So that's why you have to get educated. It doesn't matter if history and all that kind of stuff is lied about and all that kind of stuff. We already know that. Most of us should. That's why you take the maths and the sciences. Math and science is either right or it's wrong. So nobody can lie about that. And those are the building blocks of all education. Again, East Indians, the Asians, foreigners. Do you think these people are coming here taking engineering of all type, biology of all types, just because they want to become a doctor or because they just love computers? No. They're working on behalf of their nation, their people. They want the knowledge and they want to take it back to their people, which they have been doing. The smart ones have been doing. I don't know what the hell is taking Africans so long, but the Asians, and they, they're doing it and have been doing it. That's how Japan got off because they had humiliation with the white man. They said, oh, hell, not a game because they got the honor, you know, <laughs> sometimes honor, you know, even if you get your ass whooped honor it can work man because it can encourage you and, and inspire you but they said fuck this what we're going to do we're going to send our people all over the world learn what the white man knows in his school bring it back to our country and we're going to make something of our shit even though that Japan was already about something anyways but <clears throat> it helped them compete with the white man and then on top of that it helped them take it to the next level above the white man because to this day Japan is still the most technologically advanced country on the planet still <laughs> I mean it, it, yeah after World War II the white man did help them out after they nuclear bombed them but see the white man does these things because he realizes these are dangerous foes who can potentially hurt me in the future nuclear bomb and no nuclear bomb so he said I gotta put these people under our control I gotta make friends with these people and ever since Japan has been acting nice acting uh, like Buddhists or something you know and don't think for a second that the Japanese just can't easily put together some nuclear weapons don't think that you know damn well they got nuclear capabilities but see that's what happened when the Japanese put their minds to it the Chinese put their minds to it East Indians put their minds to it the East Indians are still kind of ragtag you know all those cultural differences all these countries got different cultures and different groups going on but because of how they were formed and all that kind of stuff but India has the nuclear weapons but on the one hand, they're still kind of third world on some parts. 
China is kind of like third, second world on some parts and first world on other parts. So, you know, Africa, the Caribbean, see those people, when they go to the white man's schools and get educated, yeah, those leaders, the dictators and the pan-Africanists alike, they go to the white man's schools in Europe and in, in the United States, wherever the colonies were, and they get educated. How come these people, these same pro-black pan-African guys, how come they don't say, well, Patrice uh, Lumumba and uh, other guys shouldn't have gotten educated from the white men's uh, universities. Asians, went, they were colonized. They got uh, educated from the white men's universities. You see what they did? It's what you take. Fuck law unless you're just trying to make a living or become a prosecutor or, or become a judge or some shit, politician. Get into that. But when it comes to nation building, laws can always be changed. But the maths and sciences, they cannot be changed. They can only be built upon. Those are the foundations for making a nation. That's why these people are taking engineering, biology, maths, and sciences, and all that kind of stuff. Because they build nations. You look at the African countries. They, they rely on other people to make streets and buildings. And then the Africans can't even maintain them. They got people riding in the streets on bikes. People walking in the streets with the cars. No lights. Uh, <laughs> they all got to go by field. <laughs> I mean, it's like a whole bunch of craziness, man. I mean, it, it, it's just crazy. So you don't see Africans, even though I say the Nigerians are starting to make some strides, but they're still a discombobulated nation. But overall, you don't see Africans, you don't see Caribbeans going to the white man's school. They get educated when they get here. But I don't see them going back and reinvesting in their nation. Because if these people are making being engineers and, and doctors, which they are here and in Europe, what do you need the black American to go to Africa for? Why do these Pan-Africanists keep telling us to get the hell out of America? Why do they keep doing that? I keep I keep telling you, why do they keep doing this? Every Pan-African keeps telling you go to Africa. But how can you're not in Africa, man? You go to visit. Why don't you live there? You like the white man's amenities. That's why. And you're not ready for Africa. So, again, the Asian can do it. The African can't. The Caribbean can't. Caribbean islands are small. If you can't manage those, what can you manage? I mean, I'm being real. What can you manage? I mean... These places, Africa, Caribbean, you know, it's no wonder why they look alike, aside from the fact that they're filled with the same peoples. It's because they don't maintain, they don't build anything. When you're a country and you have to call on somebody from the outside to build something, you're a country that can't self-sustain. Now, yeah, I know, I know, I know. Even the United States will call on outside companies that specialize in something to build a bridge or a skyscraper or something like that. But that's because they want to, not because they have to. Some international bidders have better prices or even some exotic designs. But the United States, they don't have to do it. They can get everything domestically here done. But any given African nation... You see, the royal palace is, is what? It's, it's something left over from colonial times. I mean, again, if the Africans could build stuff from at least the goddamn Middle Ages, which had nice buildings and architecture, they'd be all right. You know, but they can't even do that. They can't even build something from... 5,000 years ago. Ancient Egypt. They can't do that. 
Caribbean, so they can't do that. But you can go to practically any Southeast Asian nation and they can at least try to copy what was done a few thousand years ago, even though the people were quite modified from a few thousand years ago. That is, they were black first, and then they got lighter, and you see the results now. And the truth is that when you look around the world, Earth, this is really starting to get hard to believe that everything started from black people, man, given the state of black people, man. Like I said, this is why you can't shit on the East Indian and the related peoples because those are the only people doing anything that's black. The only ones. <laughs> I mean, who else is doing anything? We're doing entertainment stuff. Yeah, our hands are tied behind our back. Black peoples in the Western Hemisphere, you know, they usually make up and dominate the culture of whatever country they're in. And, and innovated the culture, the popular culture. Yeah, black people are responsible for the white man rising to power. But the white man's will to fight and never give up allowed him to defeat the Moors. See, if the white man did like what these guys are telling you to do, which is, oh, well, Black Wall Street got bombed. So we might as well not even try to make another one. The white man will bomb it again. Now what the white man said then, the Moors, they fucked us up. We lost this one. I guess we might as well give up and not even try to battle them. They might as well keep Spain and Portugal. Now nah, the white man said, man, fuck that. We got to take this shit. And we're going to figure out how to take it. They take the loss, regroup, analyze what went wrong. And then get some better equipment, better strategy, and ultimately they beat the, the black man down. And unfortunately, that was the end of our time, but when you think about it, it wasn't really long ago. We can come back, but we got to put the fucking weed down, the coke down. I mean, black people, man, I don't know what the fuck it is. It's like black people need fried chicken. Need weed, need alcohol, and sneakers. <laughs> I mean, and a fucking haircut all the fucking time. I mean, you should be neat, but I mean, you know, goddamn. These are the things black people seem to must have. But when it comes to maneuvering this in, within this society, you reject education and you even tell other people not to get educated. Because you tell them, you try to instill fear. You say, hey, you, you got to stop fearing the white man. But then you tell the white, you tell black people, fear the white man, because if you build another black Wall Street, the white man's going to burn it down. Fear the white man, because if you go to college, white man's not going to give you a job. So you're trying to, trying to tell black people to quit before they get started. Again, this is why you got to look at the people who are doing things that are working. So you say you critique the white man. But, yeah, the white man has stole, done nothing but stolen everybody's ideas and, and creations. And that's what Freemasonry is. That You know, it's kind of like a culmination of what worked. They put it all together and said, hey, man, this is the top of the top. But over the millennia, the white man has stolen everything. True. You can call him stupid and say, okay, he didn't have anything. He couldn't create anything. Or you can say he was smart enough to take what the hell worked and use it for himself. And he keeps on doing that. That's why he keeps picking the brain of the East Indian, the Asian, everybody else. Finds out what makes you people tick. And then he tries to uh, uh, apply it to himself. That's why you see white people marrying Asians uh, as much as they can. Because they realize, okay, these people are superior to us. So we need them nearby so we can see what the hell they're all about. Understand what makes them tick, what makes them think. <clears throat> but black people, <laughs> instead of applying shit, you want to keep reinventing the wheel, hoping to get a new design. 
why do you need to reinvent the wheel when the wheel has already been proven to do what it does? I mean, it doesn't make any sense. That's why I'm here to try and cut through all the bullshit. People call it hating. I call it exposing, yeah, evaluating so you can dismiss. And the reason why you need to dismiss is because if you keep worrying about them holding you back, you're never going to get ahead. That's why. That's what I'm all about. God damn it. That's why I need the goddamn donations. And these other people don't need the donations because all they're going to do is buy a BMW. You don't hear what I'm saying? These donations are going to us, do you? It's, it's gotten to the point now when they get these super chats. They don't even shout out the people who are uh, giving the money. You know, unless it's a real big one, like $200 or something. They say, oh, yeah, 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 thank you, Mike. Other than that, it's like they expect the money to come. You know, and they're, and they're not doing anything with it. Hold their feet to the fire. Make them do something. Don't, don't, don't give me lip service. That's the same thing as going to a church. Getting a sermon. You give your money up. And what have you gotten? They took what is valuable, your money, and they gave you something that they made appear to be valuable to you, which is the word of God, as they say. But you never stop and ask yourself the question. Well, if the word of God is more valuable or the most valuable thing, how come they wanted my money and how come I didn't just get the word of God on my own I mean you do have a Bible if that's what you're into you don't need a preacher to read you the Bible and they don't anyways I mean people got to stop being stupid that's all I got to say got to stop being stupid so the solution like I said education lead the drugs and alcohol alone if you can't leave the drugs and alcohol alone, make sure that you don't raise your next generation, your children, to be gangsters and thugs. I know if you're a drug addict or alcoholic, it's hard to concentrate and hard to really put your kids first and think, okay, well, let me do the best for them. Because you're thinking, okay, let me do the best for me, which is to get high and get drunk. I mean, or your mind is just that weak that you can't get off the stuff. But your mind shouldn't have been weak in the first place to get on it. See, I never touched it because I saw crackheads walking around my town. And I already knew what the deal was. I said, I don't want to be like these people. That's a pretty good uh, example to look at. Why would you want to be like them? Alcoholics, rhinos, why would you want to be like them? And I've seen them of all ages too. Everywhere in this country, you see these people. But people still say, okay, I want to go party. I would go to parties, but my idea of partying wasn't to go get high. My idea of partying was going to get me some females. If they got high, then, you know, I'm not about to try and preach and all that kind of stuff. It is what it is. But I'm going to do my thing. And if they try to get me to start drinking and smoking, you know, I don't get into that. That's not my thing. That's their thing. And this is an hour and 15 minutes almost. But, um... Again, the solution is clear. We can't reinvent the wheel. We don't need to reinvent the wheel. Just like hip hop took bits and pieces of this and that and came up with a, a, a musical form, which I think is not too good now, but you know, it is what it is. But, um, that was taking what was already established and you could say either building upon it or some people might just say it retarded it you know 
however you want to look at it, it didn't reinvent the wheel. Now, it's good to have innovation. Don't get me wrong. Because that, that's part of what black people have been doing over the throughout human history is innovating. But if you see that something works for others, you look at what it is that they're doing and you copy it. You can still innovate while you're copying. That's what the white man does. That's what he has done. He looked at the Moors. He looked at what they have done. He looked at once he discovered Egypt. He looked at what they did. Once he conquered Europe. Looked at the Roman Empire. Greek. Saw what they did. Saw how they administered the government in Rome. And then he said, you know what? We don't have a really, we don't really have a central government. So we might as well set the shit up like they had it uh, set up. The shit worked for them. It should work for us. I mean, it's that simple. You know? <laughs> I, I mean, I, I don't understand why people don't get it. Unless you just have a whole bunch of Asians trying to talk you out of it. You know? Monarchies. What are they? They're just nothing but a bunch of rich people who are greedy and want all the wealth for themselves. So they just want to keep passing it down so everybody rules. You know, if you have a stable government where everybody eats and all that kind of stuff and people can be themselves, that can work. You know, apparently it worked in Egypt, but even in Egypt, the people were so conniving, backstabbing, even some of them had to kill their siblings to take the throne. Because they were greedy and selfish and didn't give a damn about family. So, <laughs> I mean, it's a crapshoot, man. But... We don't have to reinvent the wheel. The East Indian, the Asian, what they have works. Stop trying to go left when everybody else is going right. Education works when you get the right kind of education that can work for you and your people. Theology, I can agree, throw that out the window. But at the same time, it's good to know about the different religions but like I say nobody can speak for God or claim to know what God wants or knows but religions have affected societies so you kind of have to study those just for that reason alone but the solution <laughs> is education there's no getting around it like I said when armies attack even Rome they, that's a good example, because the white man's modern society is modeled after Rome. Rome was crude in the beginning. They didn't know what to do. All they knew was they they were surrounded by a bunch of black people in Europe. That's right. You do you go look it up for yourself and, and figure it out. Because Italy was black. Italians will tell you that today. Latins came in, even though the Greeks were there first. <clears throat> started looking at the Etruscans, black people. Started realizing these people don't stick together, but they're advanced. And they let us in. See, by the mere fact that they let them in. Said a whole lot and didn't go kick them out when they came. That gave the white man a spark. Yes, I am taking a guess. Because something in the white man... Made them say, we can do this. We can take these motherfuckers. Because you think about it. You're coming from a distant land. The land isn't yours. But all of a sudden, you're in there. People don't look like you. But something made you say, yeah, we could take this. Italy. Now I'm going really long. <laughs> but Italy. I probably split this in two. <clears throat> Italy is a strategic country now and it was definitely strategic back in the ancient times why because it's right it's the only country smack dab in the middle protruding in the Mediterranean and you got one side of Italy for the west the other side going toward the eastern Mediterranean 
So you had to be strong to defend Italy on all sides. Then you got the lower part going into Syracuse, also known as Sicily, leading into Africa. That's why Italy was strategic, and that's why Rome, once they consolidated power, that's why they ended up being the power that they became. Because Carthage had, had a lot of that before Rome. And I'm not about to get into that history. That's going to make me really go long. <clears throat> but once the Latins said, okay, we could take these people. Started whipping some ass, consolidating uh, city-states in Italy. Established Rome. What they did, this is why you got to learn true history. History is common sense. It's not what somebody tells you. See, people can tell you about events. Some people leave out the people involved because, you know, politics, race politics. And some people fill in the blanks with history. So that's what you do. You have to fill in the blanks, but you got to fill it in with common sense. Not with, uh, well, the white man says everybody was white. So let me start from that point. Nah, man, you don't do that. You start from whatever the fuck the point is. And then you look into that. Like with Rome, Latin. It's clear that the white man came in and started taking and kicking ass. <laughs> I mean, and, and using manipulation. But the key part about Rome, and this goes into the education part, the solution, and adopting what exists and taking it as your own. He saw the Etruscans, their civilization, their weapons. He probably figured, well, you know what? I could probably utilize this shit better than they can. So, and the Greeks that were around too. So they stole the Etruscan style and stole weapons from the Greeks. And they stole from Carthage. That armor, I keep telling you, that armor. That's why Hannibal's always depicted as wearing what you think is a Roman outfit. Because you think he conquered Italy and then started dressing as the, the Romans. That was his people's outfit. Carthage. And then Rome stole that from Carthage because Carthage was mighty. And Carthage won at first. And Rome said, that shit works. We got to take it. They saw what the Etruscans were wearing. They took that shit from them. Because the shit worked. Economics, philosophy, all types of shit. However you go down the list. You take the best of the best and keep it for yourself. And then you utilize that. That's what happens. That's what black people need to do. Instead, you got Negroes who reject education reject knowledge reject what works instead they want to tell you don't get educated don't go to college damn they want you to fear the white man fear success why do they keep doing this and why do you keep supporting them why do you keep looking to people who tell you to do the opposite of what is successful that's what you have to understand. You got to start thinking about this. This is how you get tricked. And this is how they control you. Because they figure, okay, well, if you're not educated, then I can get me some super chat money. You know? I can, get, I can, I can go do lectures and get paid. I can write a book about my opinions. And I can get rich. This must be the case because they're not teaching you to have success. See, I'm trying to get people to have success because I'm tired of black people shaming me and I'm tired of being ashamed of the black people who are out on the street corner and not getting their shit together. Like I said, I know we're being oppressed and we're being stopped, but God damn it, you still do your thing. It's just like people trying to get in the uh, sports to become a rapper. You know you probably are, uh, are a whack-ass rapper. But you still say, hey, man, I see another guy. He, he looks like he has some money off of rapping. He's corny. Shit, maybe, maybe I should give it a shot. But you still do it. And what do you do? You do.
do the same thing that the rappers do. Talk about guns, drugs, pussy. You wear what they wear. Whoever the hottest one is, you, you wear what they wear. Even if it's some gay stuff. Because you, you're like, okay, this works for them. I need some of their quote-unquote energy. So I'm going to use what they have. And you hope that people pay attention to you. Because you took what worked for the other guy and put it on yourself. This is what rappers do. This is what athletes do. So if you can do that for yourself, how come black people just can't do this when you watch other groups? It's that simple, man. But we just need the apparatus to make sure that black people adhere to the group. And that's what I'm about. And that's why I say foreign blacks can't join because they're not a part of our group, number one. And they're part of the reason we're unsuccessful. Now, I know they're going to say, oh, he's saying, oh, we're, Caribbeans are, are, are the reason why black people are down. I didn't say that. I said you're a part of the reason that we are unsuccessful because you follow the white man. What works? And it works for you, but you don't apply it back to your own countries. That's why your countries are still a shithole, like Donald Trump said. <laughs> well, he said it for Africa. I think he said it for Haiti, too. So, it's that simple. You guys are involved in this pan African stuff, which takes the focus off of us. And we start talking about pan African this, pan African that, Caribbean this. And we're not talking about us. We're not doing for us. That's why I dismiss pan-Africanism. Not only that, because, you know, like other things I've said in the past, they're not even true to their own game. Pan-Africanism is a waste of our time. We focus on black America, do our thing. Then we'll get somewhere. We got to dismiss other influences. People coming here trying to influence us to worry about Caribbean styles and African ways and shit, African spirituality, uh, what an African person is, and they can't even define it. That's what you people need to work on. You people that I'm talking to. Why don't you work on trying to find a definition for African spirituality or African culture or an African people? Work on that. So when you do battle with somebody like me, you won't be stumbling and fumbling. So I can't believe I did an hour and a half and my voice is just starting to uh, fall apart here. So I'm going to split this up in two. And this is the solution. Because people always ask people like me, what are your solutions? Well, I have a lot of videos that say the solutions. But then when you get the solution out, the interim solution, they, they for some reason want to dismiss the solution. But when you ask them for the solution, the solution is we got to fight this white man. That's not a solution. That's an action. Or we got to go to Africa. That's an escape mechanism. <laughs> That's fear. Go to Africa and do what? Nothing. That's what? You're going to go there and be a citizen of a country. I mean, that's stupid to keep telling people to go to Africa. You demonstrate to us that going to Africa is beneficial. You go there. You got YouTube. Make videos. Show us what's up. But they don't want to do that because they don't believe in it. You know, others say, let's take a state. <sighs> that's a better goal than going to Africa. I'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the uh, you know Mississippi is a poor state. That's better than going to Africa, but still, these are lofty goals because these these goals are from a standpoint that you already have something great established and a lot of resources. So again, people who make the suggestions that we need to go someplace. And this is not a diss, but I'm just trying to say, man, people have to demonstrate it themselves by going there. 
first. Show us how it is. That's the only way you can influence people. It's like if, if somebody's never been to a strip club before, but you know everybody's interested in sex of some kind. And then you say, hey man, I went to this strip club, man. They got these big butt holes. A strip club, what's that? That's where these holes take their clothes off. They do? Damn, does it cost money? How, how do we get there? If it sounds too complicated, they may not do it. But if you show them some pictures and you say, hey man, this is what it's all about. It's going to take a few dollars though. And they see some titties and some butts, some nice looking females, holes. That's what a stripper is, a hoe. Uh, then they'll say, oh shit, maybe I, I got to go there. Because there's something that's driving them there now. Because they see what it is and they see the potential. <laughs> In this case, the potential is seeing some titties, seeing some ass. And of course, we all know what happens in strip clubs behind the scenes. And if you don't, maybe you haven't been to the right ones. But um, <laughs> that'll get people out and about. So that's what needs to be happening with this Africa thing or even the Mississippi thing. People need to see the person making the proposal go there, set up shop, show us what it's all about. Once we see it's working for you, then more people will come and say, let's get it going. Let's, let's do it. That's how it has to be done because that's how black people are. Black people don't like getting involved in something unless they see somebody else having success. That's why you see rappers always, that used to always have a, a clothing line. Clothing line, their own label, champagne, the same old stuff because they saw the next man do it and have some kind of success with it. They don't want to take risks like having their own car. I'm not talking about a car with, with some their name on it or something like that. I'm talking about a car that they made or own apartment building. You know, people don't want to take those risks, but they need to see somebody doing it first. Then they get on it. That's what, that's what we need to do. So I know for me, Africa's out of the question. Mississippi. We just need to see a demonstration for those of us who have never been to a place like that. We need to see what it has to offer, because from what I've seen in the capital of Jackson, which is where my mother is originally from, I've never been there. It doesn't look like much, man. I'm going to be honest with you. She was supposed to have taken me sometime, but, you know, never happened. But it doesn't look like a place I want to voluntarily go to. And plus, I heard Jackson, Mississippi is pretty dangerous, too, so... Well, I mean, we just have to see. We we have to we have to get there. Once we get there, people get there, demonstrate, set up shop. Others will come. Like that old saying, "You build it, they will come." If you just talk about it, they won't come. <laughs> that's the bottom line. So, what I'm trying to do is that's what I'm trying to do. Something more realistic that people can get into where they're at. But the long term goal is unity but it's a type of unity where people buy in with each other a unity where people trust each other and have an incentive to trust each other that's the key thing you need an incentive black is not enough africa damn sure ain't enough because we have other groups of black peoples in this country who come in and mess up our flow. They mislead, they distract, they try to get us into things that we shouldn't be into while they get into the things that people should be into. They're hating, that's what it is. So now it's an hour and 35 minutes. But for those who say, I'm gonna close this out now, for those who say I don't offer solutions, it's a solution. 
I, I can't tell you everything, but I can tell you the interim things that you can get started on your own. And if I, like I said, I need more donations to actually get the thing going the way it needs to be going. If I had the donations that these other people were getting, goddamn it, it'd be in effect right now. I'm telling you. But these other people are getting donations and nothing's, nothing's in effect with them. Because they didn't say something was going to be in effect. So, here are my solutions for people who say I don't offer solutions. Now, let's see what you're going to do with my solutions. Besides, hate on them and say that they're no good solutions. Well, what are your solutions? Sonetta doesn't give any solutions. Not That's not who I'm talking about in this video either. And these other guys don't offer solutions. They just offer more ways to run away. And no, I'm not talking about Angel Snump Nut 7 either. Just in case people are wondering. You never know. You never guess who I'm talking about. But if you watch videos, you get an idea. But they don't offer solutions. They just want you to cower in fear and pay most of your attention to another people in another land and not worry about you. With that, I definitely have to close this out this time.